Hey, back here at the jig bar. I thought I would give it one more try on, on my uh, duplex material uh, workpiece here. And uh, I thought I'd just go ahead and try, try to do a finish cut. I, I got the bore uh, uh, within a half thousandths taper, and, uh, which was uh, not an improvement over, I think, uh, three tenths uh, <laughs> I got before. So I'm going to shoot the hole one more time and, uh, and, see, and see if I can get it uh, uh, a little bit better. I got a very sharp tool, so I might I, I might as well use it. Okay, so um, I'll feed I'll feed the tool in. Here we go. Unlock it here. I want to feed it in. Yeah, just about two thousandths depth. Okay, that looks good right where everything is. We'll get it fired up and I'll speed it up. We're going about 672. Um, I'm going to kick it up about 900. Now the drive system is a Reeves drive, variable speed pull. Okay. And there it goes. Oh, it's looking good. Looking pretty good. Speeding it up. Let's see how we do on the taper. Yeah, a little bit noisy. I'm going to drop it down rather than cook the tool. If it gets to that point. We're not down into the hard part yet. <laughs> now, one of the things about this machine with the stiffer spindle, it is designed for single point cutting. And uh, you can get away with using longer bars and or higher speeds. And many times, and almost all the time with carbide, the higher speeds you can get, uh, the uh, smoother the finish. So you want the best finish you can get. You know, everything's going pretty happily there. The later machines are a lot quieter than this. This is an early number two. Okay, we are to Now this earlier number two has the dreaded new departure bearings up in the top. And uh, that can be quite a challenge to deal with. Oh, you know, that looks real good. I'm real happy with the way that looks. And we'll get a look at it. Get it up out of the way. Uh, okay. Get that up. How are we doing? Here's the wrench. I'm going to get this out. Now, I usually... 
Um, remove the tool from the boring head when I when I sharpen it or or even you know hone it. It's just because I'm kind of clumsy with it in the head, and I can roll the edge over, uh, you know, trying to uh, touch it up. So it's just easier for me to pull the tool out. Okay, get that set right there. Look at that board gauge back in there. <laughs> and it is hiding where it couldn't have gone far. Oh, uh, here it is, way over here. And I'm going to probably have to adjust it a little bit. We'll see. Get that thing in there still. Oh, yeah, I need to load it just a little bit. I'll pull that out. You can set this to uh, specific diameters, of course. That should do it. A little bit tighter there. Put that tiny wrench back. That should do it, I hope. Yeah, it didn't go too far. Okay, get it at the top here. Okay. Now when you're when you're boring and cutting metal, you get a little bit of fuzz on it. And uh, when you use the gauge, you want to rock it back and forth and it just kind of wears that fuzz down. And <laughs> you get a little bit more accurate there, see. Yeah. I get a little bit of parallax there looking at it, I think. Let me get my head in front of it. That's good right there. Okay, I'm going to start sliding it down. Oh, yeah. See, now we're getting about two tenths tighter. So I improved that considerably. See? Now that I'm down into that hard stuff, it's only two tenths. And I had it as bad as a half thousandth. So that improve <laughs> is great. Let's see where we are here. Get up to the top to the soft metal. Yeah, see. So that's as good as it's going to get with the jig board. And that's plenty good enough for uh, putting um, bronze bushing in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press this bronze bushing. In and uh, side basically size it on the way, push it in here. Then I, I got a process to size it uh, <clears throat> in the milling machine, and then it's going to go over to the salmon home for finishing. I think you might find that interesting. It's just sort of uh, a process of uh, using the various machines, and uh, I think that's going to be okay. Set that down there, and I get over here, have a look. Okay. <clears throat> okay, do a little bit of a recap on some things. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now, I've talked about the importance of uh, getting the tool um, aligned with the y-axis okay now this uh, this is the more head here it's got a ten thousandths uh, veneer now if you're careful enough you can put a ten thousandths uh, indicator on a regular boring head okay so um i've seen that on some um videos and that's uh a viable thing to do. Now, one of the advantages of the jig boring machine over a regular vertical mount is the ease of using dial bore gauges. You see, the machine's meant to bore holes. So its vertical sliding head is uh, it's just incredibly valuable. Because if you think about it on a bridge port, what are you gonna do? You're gonna move the table, or you're going to move the dreaded knee. 
And don't forget that regular machines have uh, influencing table locks. Now we'll take a quick look at that. Um, see, the uh, most machines work on the gib. Let's see if we can see the gib. I think it's back on the other side there. But this machine here works on this band, okay? It's just a clamp on this band here. And it's the same with uh, the Y-axis locks. And uh, so that's uh, one of the uh, advantages uh, of the machine is uh, not having to move the table for your gauging. Huge advantage. Saves a lot of time. And uh, one of the things we're talking about the stuff, you know, the cost of machinery. Sometimes you can work on really expensive things like this. <laughs> this is extremely expensive old thing. You wouldn't believe how much this thing's worth. Just this. But uh, I'm going to do a video on this. Uh, this is a guitar I'm going to sell. So that's, uh, you see a, a guitar video, you know, it's just going to be about a guitar. Okay, I will be back. Bye.